a lot of open spaces that are perfectly good but the full proposal gives a number of places some of them are islands and places like the philippines when i went to the philippines a number of years ago somebody offered to sell me an island there are thousands of islands for sale around the world many of them uninhabited and there are countries that have a lot of uh, open land so they would have to agree everything has to be voluntarily to sell some of it off and that create a homeland for refugees from all over the world but isn't that like shutting the door on communities, treating them like lepers, saying you can't be part of existing communities? But the problem is they're not part of existing communities now. They're living miserable lives in refugee camps and in tents. I'm not saying, you know, ship people over against their will. This would be, everything that I'm proposing would be completely voluntarily, both on the side of the country that would be willing to sell some land off, as well as on the refugees that would be going there. If I'm living in a refugee camp right now, in let's say Jordan and I fled the Syrian civil war and I don't think I can ever come home or I've been living for decades in Lebanon as a Palestinian refugee or a South Sudanese refugee or these uh, Rohingya minority that are being driven out of Myanmar also known as Burma right now these people have miserable lives a lot of times they can't work they're not they don't have citizenship rights they can't own land you know they don't have the kind of lives that you and I do they don't kind of have the kind of opportunities and freedom that we do so to have a a new country of their own. I think most would prefer that. Now, many of them do want to come to the West, but as you know, there's immigration debates raging right now in your country and in my country and all developed countries pretty much. Uh, a lot of anti-immigrant backlash. So that's not a polit politically feasible solution. So what I think is a better solution is to create a country where they can be full citizens, have full rights like everybody else. But how do you see the economics of this working? First of all, who would pay for this? Who would pay for the land? For this to become a reality, it's not going to become a reality just because I have this idea, but, but it definitely can become a reality if we have some very wealthy people. challenge is frankly the world's track record of artificial nation building is really not strong it creates challenges of what happens to a potential indigenous population and as we know when you combine artificially different populations from different countries of origin it can ironically lead to violence which can in turn lead to displacement so there are massive challenges but i suppose jason boozy would say look this is a way of opening up the debate nobody else has come up with a particularly good example and if anything uh, the world the, the developed world uh, richer countries mm -hmm. are turning their back on refugees feeling simply that they're overwhelmed they can't cope mm -hmm. i really commend mm -hmm. jason boozy's sort of moral outrage the lack of solutions mm -hmm. to a global problem he's very articulate <laughs> 